السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We welcome all those in, att in attendance as well as those who are tuning in via our live stream services, that is the YouTube and Facebook, to today's Juma program by Pleasure Hack, the entrance of Logan, Victoria, South Africa. Today's program of Pleasure Hack, the speaker will be Brother Yusuf Mustafa, who is a seasoned journalist and researcher at Radio 1584 and Medina Media. His topic today comes from Quran, Surah 33, verse 21, Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim, and verily, in the message of Allah, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have an excellent example. Jazakallah. Awud billahi na shaitan al-rajim, Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against shaitan, the rejected one. I begin with the mighty name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. Peace and blessings be upon Nabi Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, his family, companions, and the Muslim Ummah at large. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we know, Muslims around the world are currently observing Rabbi al-Awwal as the month of the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many writers, such as George Bernard Shaw, Muhammad Pithol, Muhammad Abdul Hakim Khan, Abdul Fazl, Maulana Muhammad Ali, etc., have written at length in their understanding of the greatest human being to ever have walked on the face of this earth. They have written at great length. Now this is their opinion and this is their understanding of who Nabi Muhammad Wasallam was. But what does the Quran say about Nabi Muhammad Wasallam? What does Allah himself say about Nabi Muhammad Wasallam? Therefore, in today's lecture, we will be using the Quran in understanding the main reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us. The Quran is quite clear and it talks at great length about Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's main mission, his moral excellence, his political wrongs, his business life, his family matters, and many other social platforms. Furthermore, the Quran regards Nabi Muhammad as the last of messengers sent by Allah in a chain of messengers. Therefore, the reason why he has made Nabi Muhammad as the last, there is no way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will paint a very vague or unclear picture of who Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was. As much as people believe that the name itself, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is mentioned four times in the Quran, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala personally gives the name Ahmed to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once. But now, directly mentioning to Muhammad as a name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will also look at other ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is referred to as titles as well, as characters as well. Before we look at these ayahs of the, of, of the Holy Quran, from the onset, let us understand that each and every messenger of Allah that was sent, when he came, may Allah be pleased with all of them, when a particular messenger came, he had to introduce himself that I am the messenger of Allah, sent by Allah, to confirm the messenger that was there before. And also, I am the messenger of Allah to give you glad tidings to confirm the messenger that will come after me. We'll give you an example. In chapter 61, ayah 6, Nabi Isa does this. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And remember Jesus, the son of Mary, saying, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you, confirming the law which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. Now then Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala after Isa introduces Isa alayhi salam introduces Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allah himself then tells us the reason why he is sending the comforter that is Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wasallam This we find in chapter 33 ayah 21 of the Holy Quran repeated again in chapter 68 ayah 4 of the Holy Quran which happens to be the topic for today's talk he says, Bismillah rahman rahim Ye have indeed, in the apostle of Allah, a beautiful pattern of conduct for anyone whose hope is in Allah at the final day and who engages much in the places of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Allah Nadim. Here, if we pay attention, you find that Allah mentions two reasons why he sends that he Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first reason is that if you want to be pleased with Allah and Allah to be pleased with you, who do you follow? You follow the teachings of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you want to be raised up on the final day, that's on the day of Qiyamah, in a perfect way, in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose teachings do you follow? The teachings of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After having laid the ground, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes deeper in making understand, making us understand who Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are four instances where Allah directly mentions Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by name. The first one is in chapter 23, ayah 40 of the Holy Quran. This will be like Rahim. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the father of any of your men. But he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of prophethood. And Allah is full of knowledge of all things. Now we are going to go into detail why Allah emphasizes that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the seal of prophethood. In other words, there is no other messenger of Rasul that is going to be coming after him. Now the second ayah where he is mentioned directly by name is in chapter 47, the second ayah of chapter 47, where Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim But those who believe and work deeds of righteousness and believe in the revelation sent down to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for it is the truth from their Lord, he will remove from them their ills and improve their condition. Are we going through depression? Are you going through hard times? Are you going through negative energy? Are you going through an uphill? How do you solve all these things? Allah gives the answer in this chapter 47, the second ayah, where he directly mentions the name Muhammad. That what he gave to Nabi Muhammad وسلم, is a book of guidance which solves all these problems of depression, mayhem, chaos, negative energy, follow the book that was given to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thirdly, directly mentioning his name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in chapter 48 of the Holy Quran, ayah 29, he says, Bismillahi rahmani rahim, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are strong against unbelievers, but compassionate against each other, or rather compassionate amongst each other. Thou will see them bow and prostrate themselves in prayer, seeking grace from Allah and His good pleasure. Now, a brief explanation of this is that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Your fellow Muslim brother, show as much compassion as possible to your fellow Muslim brother, and be hard on the kufar, those that associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa taala." This is evidence in chapter 48, ayah 29. And the last of the four ayahs where he mentions Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by name is in chapter 3, ayah 144, where he says, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is only a messenger. Many were the messengers that were passed away or killed 
before him, if he died or was slain, will he then turn back on your heels? If he did turn back on your heels, not the least harm will he do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you pay attention to this uh, ayah, Allah says, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only a messenger. In other descriptions, they say, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only a man sent from amongst yourself unto you. Pay attention to the message that he brought than anything else. And what message did he bring? Now, so far we have looked at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by name. Then Allah again in the Quran, 16 times, research was that 16 times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by title. And in each one of these 16 times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the reason why he mentions Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by title. The first one, he uses the title or Nabi. Second one, or Rasul, or Messenger, or Prophet. Allah used the, the word Nabi to refer to, loosely translated as Prophet. The example is in chapter 3, ayah 164 of the Holy Quran, where Allah says, Bismillah rahman rahim Surely Allah conferred a great favor on the believers where he raised from among them a messenger to recite to them his signs and to purify them and to teach them the book. So the main reason here Allah says he gave us Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a favor. When we are following Islam, we are not doing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a favor. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a favor in the form of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do what? To recite to us his signs, to teach us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to purify us and to learn wisdom from the book. Then in another uh, verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was described as a warner and a barrier of clear tidings. Now a warner and a, 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 a person who gives clear tidings is referred to as Bashira Waladira. Now, let's ask ourselves the one question. Why was he sent as a warner unto us? In the following ayah, if you pay attention again to chapter 12, ayah 108, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah rahman rahim Say, O Nabi, this is my way. I call to you to Allah on the basis of clear perception. Both I and those who follow me, Allah, he praised. He is free from any imperfection. And listen to the last conclusion of this ayah. I have nothing to do with those who associate others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his divinity. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he is told by Allah to tell us that those who associate partners with Allah, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has nothing to do with them. So we are warned here, that is why Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is referred to here as a warner. A warner against what? Against shirk. Against associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, each and every prophet, may Allah be pleased with all of them, they mentioned this very vital statement that they are the messengers of Allah. They have come to warn that don't associate any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another popular one, where we find it in uh, chapter 33, ayah 40, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have sent Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to seal Nubuwat. And moreover, Allah normally, or rather, those who are learned in the Quran, they normally combine this ayah with the one where Allah says, and today I have perfected your religion. And I have called you Muslims, and I have named your religion Islam, I have made it perfect. And I have used Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the seal of prophethood. And moreover, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, besides mentioning Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly by name or by title, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioning Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with characteristics, with character. Now let's look at a few before I conclude 
a few ayats of the Holy Quran where Allah mentions that in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through his character. The one where Allah says, chapter 68, number 4, he says, surely you, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, possesses a very high moral standing. Those who want to be morally upright in the society have to follow the character of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam described in chapter 68, ayah 4. Ayah 4. And furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a good example this we have already described. And he says, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, anything that pains his ummah. Now listen to this one. He says, all you who believe, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is soft-hearted. Anything that pains the ummah, it pains him. So learn this character that anything that pains your brother should pain you as well. Because Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, till on his dying bed, we are told that he was saying, my ummah, my ummah. And on the day of Qiyamah, we are told that he is going to be raising up, worried about me and you, his followers. So I will learn in this character which is described by Allah where he says what pains Nabi is regarding what pains you as the follower of Islam. And of course, the Quran again described Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a bringer of truth and as a blessing also, confirmed in chapter 21, ayah 107. We have sent you, O Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a mercy unto the whole world. Let's not think that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only brought to us to be a mercy to us. The Quran confirms that his character as a merciful person was displayed on the animals, was displayed on the plants, on the trees, was displayed even on non-Muslims. Are we as merciful as Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And in conclusion, we reiterate that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an embodiment of what transpired with all the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah be pleased with them. Their mission was one and the same, that is worship and believe in the oneness of Allah without associating any partners. Allah sent all of them to constantly remind us to focus and totally depend on Him, nothing else. Therefore, Nabi Muhammad affirmed that all the revelation from the Anbiya was from one source, and that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, to confirm this, in chapter 2, ayah 136, or chapter 3, ayah 84, he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, say, we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us, and to Abraham, to Ismail, to Isaac, to Jacob, and the tribes, and that given to Moses and Jesus, and that given to all prophets from their Lord, we make no difference between one or another of them, and we bow down to Islam as Muslims, to please nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ